season since we were sitting in a good spot going into the season. You got to win to stay there. Live from Gigi's Burger Bar on 9th Street in downtown Coffeyville, it's the Red Ravens Coaches Show with the voice of the Red Ravens, Shay Neal, and head coach, Jeff Liker. The Red Ravens Coaches Show brought to you by the David W. Barnes Funeral Home and Gigi's Burger Bar. Now from Gigi's Burger Bar, the Red Ravens Coaches Show on the mighty 690 KGGF. Back here at our Red Raven Coaches Show. We appreciate your patience. We had a little bit of a technical issue to iron out there, but we're joined by Coach Liker, and it actually worked out very well. Where now we have another member of the coaching staff joining us. I'll let him introduce himself. How are you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. Fantastic. Uh, well, you're a 15-year vet on the defensive line, so how about yes, that? That's absolutely impressive. And I'll tell you what, I thought uh, well, defensive line was one of the things I had written on my notes. I thought, uh, for the most part, against Island, I think Coach Liker would agree with me, I thought the defensive line was fantastic. No, well, they, played, they played really well. You know, we, Young only had really one starter who had a chance to come back, uh, Griffin Lampton, but the rest of them coming in uh, did a great job. Those kids play hard. Something I like, and I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on this because I'm sure you both uh, have hands in the recruiting process, but something I really noticed from your team, especially in that first half, you have big, physical, strong defensive tackles, and then a little bit smaller, not small, but a little bit smaller on the defensive ends looking more for like those speed rushers, and I thought it worked very effectively against Highland. Is that an approach you go for in recruiting? Do you like those kind of speed your defensive ends and you match them with the powerful defensive tackles? Absolutely. There's no doubt. But the interior defensive line, you want bigger and you want to have speed with those guys up front. Uh, That makes it really tough for the offense to deal with. Our goal on the defensive front is to play about two yards on the other side of the offensive line. That makes so much different challenges for the offense with the running backs, quarterbacks, handoffs, different things. Out on the edge, you want those speed rushers that can go like last year we had Khalil Alexander, you know, soaking wet. He was 205 pounds, but he had the heart of the size of the state of Texas, and he played fast. He was our second leading tackler on our defense last year behind uh, Mir Renwick, but that's what we're looking for. Ideally, we'd like to have about 245 to 250, 255 defense ends on the outside to have some speed and can go uh, wreck some shop. You know, Mom, the big thing is trying to have a hard edge. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on this as well, because the guy that really stood out to me on Saturday, especially in that first half, was Griffin Lampton. I thought he was fantastic in that game, uh, not just on the pass situations. I thought he was a great pass rusher, really had good burst off the snap, a uh, good burst on the, uh, on the hard count, but also at the same time, uh, uh, I thought he was defending the run very well, sealing the edge. Uh, your your uh, your overall impressions with how Griffin played? Well, I thought, so first of all, let me introduce Coach Jericho as our D-line Please. coach. Um, uh, coach was with me the first seven years, and he also was with Coach Skip Foster for the six years prior to that. I was lucky enough to get him back last year, and a lot of the guys that will be with us this year, Coach was responsible for in recruiting. So, And he's also our um, head coach of the powerlifting program, so... We got um, we we got a lot of value in getting coach back to this program, and um, but getting to the question you asked about Griff, he's the only one out of ten that is back. Yes, they had any playing time you know, at all for us. We had eight guys that um, graduated, went on. We had one that didn't finish it the way we asked him to, um, and then Griff was the other one. So, and he's a, he's already a graduate. He's just got to try to play to a point where somebody will come in and get him. He's not the biggest guy, but uh, as uh, you said, um, those guys, he plays hard. He's a technician. He's a, he's a transfer from Vanderbilt. Uh, so he'd actually been recruited out of uh, South Florida to play. And so he's got family up here in the um, Tulsa, area. Tulsa area that, that made it an easy pickup for him when it came time to get him. So. He's just one. That's a little bit of our issue right now. We're so young. Um, he's one of the only ones that played some minutes for us last year. Uh, got a couple other kids defensively that did too, but most of those guys, that was their first college football game. 
same with the offense. We, we've lost a lot of guys to graduation, so we count on those guys like Griff and uh, the other veterans to, to try to lead us. And uh, like I said earlier, we, we just didn't play a good enough football game from start to finish to take advantage without giving the game away. That was the most frustrating piece for all of us coaches and the players is uh, leaving 20 points out there. Uh, drop pass, uh, touchdown, we didn't line up correctly, got a penalty on that, two missed field goals. Those are the kind of things that uh, drive you crazy. And right. Now that we're back on the field again, it feels a little bit better just to get going again, you know. But, boy, the weekend was the weekend was tough just sitting there thinking about it, you know. So Yeah, absolutely. And while, uh, while we have uh... – uh, Coach Shethers here. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, another thing that I really noticed uh, was how well uh, your team defended the run against Highland. 35 carries, 46 yards. I'm sure you both of you, but I'm sure you especially take great pride in that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean ups and downs a lot on defense in that game against Highland, but one that you have to take away feeling good about, especially heading into a game with Dodge that ran the ball pretty well against Iowa Western, is your front seven really contained the run very well. Well, that's our goal for our defense. We want to try to hold our opponent under 100 yards uh, for the game, and we held them to 46 on 35 carries, and that's outstanding. We want to be in a situation to hold them pass-wise. We want to hold them under 200 yards a game pass-wise, which we held them to 188. Uh, our goal is to always have three turnovers. That's the biggest thing there that we have to do better. We were only able to get one. Believe it or not, 80%, 87% of the time, the team that has the most turnovers and the fewest penalties will win the game. And unfortunately, this weekend we were on the opposite end of it. Yeah, uh, on both that of those, aspect. yeah. That make, uh, makes it tough. Makes it really tough. But the front seven, you know, Dodge uh, coming in, they're well coached. Uh, they're a uh, heavily sophomore oriented team. I know offensively they are. Their whole offensive line that they have coming back are sophomores. Uh, quarterbacks coming back, they had some playing time for. So, I mean, we're going to have a big challenge this weekend. They're well coached. You know, if we play the way we're capable of, uh, we're going to be in it. Uh, I feel good about our situation. This I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this as we uh, as we start talking about this match matchup coming up with Dodge. But uh, a lot of freshmen on this team, like we've talked about in the past, but uh, some of these, a lot of players on this team, starting off their college career with a tough loss, and you know, uh, athletes are competitors, of course, through and through, world class competitors. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys on this team that are pl- that are going to be you know suiting up this week with a ton of emotion, trying to you know redeem themselves for last week and get that first college win, especially for the freshmen. So how do you maximize that emotion obviously you want them playing with emotion you want them playing with that fire that chip on their shoulder but not letting it become too much and not letting it hinder their performance on the field penalties hurt us the other night we had some, and, and the sad thing is a few of them were from veterans that you, you, you need them to lead and not to be the ones that were uh, you know making those mistakes but they were playing with a lot of uh, uh, fire and enthusiasm and they got a little bit overzealous a time or two but um, it's our job to regroup, and our guys know the expectations at Coffeeville after the last two years, the success that we've had in getting us back on the map. That was such a uh, just such a uh, a tough blow for us to just have to swallow. You know, going into that game, coming off of a, a, a very good couple of years, and then just go out there and play poorly, and, and not poorly. I mean, for the whole game. I mean, there's five percent of the game we probably had enough snaps that hurt us and that and that's what you have to live with but so we got to get the guys to come out and do their jobs not try to go make the, the big hero play just go do your job they'll be fine if they just go do their part and let the team aspect take over absolutely and coaches this may not be something you want to hear but i think something that you know is maybe a good foreshadowing of what could happen the rest of 2023 is so much went against Coffeeville on Saturday. So much that you know uh, you expect to clean up. Of course, uh, you know looking back on this, this could very easily be the worst performance of the season. And you had a chance to win it with three minutes to go, which speaks highly, I think, on the talent on this roster, where so much went, you know, not according to plan, and you still had a chance to win this game late. So I think that speaks to the talent of Coffeeville, where no matter what happens on that field, you're going to have a chance to win at the end of the day, and that has to at least give you some sort of comfort as coaches. We hope so. Um, you know, this last week was a tough week to prepare with all the heat, but Highland had the same issues. They had to go practice at all different times of the day, and and uh, I'll give them credit. They did not shoot themselves in the foot as we did, and they got to walk out of there with a with a big big win in the uh, 
in the opener. So, um, you know, you only get so many chances in football, and, and you want to take advantage of this, every opportunity that comes along. And uh, we did not pass the test the first time, so we're hoping that we go out and play a little cleaner football and take care of business a little bit better Saturday. Absolutely. And uh, last thing I have before we move on to the Dodge game coming up on Saturday, uh, I thought one of my biggest takeaways from this game against Highland was just I thought how well of a uh, executed game plan they put together. Of course, like you mentioned, capitalizing on mistakes, capitalizing on opportunities. And now, of course, you two were the ones down on the field. Uh, what were your thoughts on the first collegiate head coaching job by DJ Mayo and that Highland team? Well, I thought, he, I mean, he did a great job. He was the D.C. last year and and uh, put his staff together. And, and his sophomores, were, they were a little heavier sophomore-oriented. They were real young last year, but um, you said it. They, they just played the game not to give it away. Uh, they let us do that for them, and, and that's how they got the W. And that's that's the toughest part to swallow is, is we we weren't clean. We were pretty sloppy at times, taking care of the football, knowing where to go with the football, um, and still had a chance. I mean, that's the and we didn't have a very good effort in the final minute either. Once we got it down there, it was just like, um, you know, didn't make the greatest calls to give us a chance. Uh, we we took a couple of looks. We didn't get we didn't get a couple of flags that we thought maybe could have been, but you're not going to get those back. You just got to go move on and and uh, and hope you can punch it in, you know. But uh, I'll let Coach kind of respond what he thought about how they came in and played as well. Well, Coach did a great job up there at Highland, without a doubt, especially after losing their head coach. I know there was a lot of emotion going into this game. Coach Mayo did a great job. The biggest thing, my takeaway from it, they were able to capitalize on the opportunities when they presented themselves to them. Okay, where well, we did, like Coach talked about earlier, we had a uh, too many people off the, uh, not enough people on the line of scrimmage on a touchdown, got called back, open touchdown, dropped a pass. We had an interception, we batted ball up in the air, and it hit one of our linebackers right in the hands, and it would have been a pick six. Then the next play, we batted a ball up in the air, and I had a defense lineman and hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it. So different things like that. They were able to capitalize on the opportunities that they had. But I think that goes with us. You know, one thing about junior college, like every year, I mean, this is my 23rd year in the community college system, and every year you have to reload. You know, this year we're just in a situation, you know, we have a lot of pups, and it makes it tough, you know, going out, especially going in your first game and then uh, being on the road and then dealing with what we had to deal with as far as our practices, bumping it uh, to night, 9 o'clock. We're getting off the football field at 10.30 at night, uh, finishing up on practice. So all that stuff comes in. And, you know, I, I hats off to them. They did a great job. Uh, Coach Miles uh, did a great job. They had a great plan. Biggest thing they were able to do that we didn't was capitalize on the opportunities when it presented itself. And for our kids, that's one thing we've been focusing on is taking advantage of our opportunities when it does present it because you never know when it's going to end up happening again you never know when it's going to end up happening again it's our red raven coaches show from Gigi's burger bar presented by Gigi's and the david w barnes funeral home we appreciate you hanging out with us we're going to step away for 90 seconds when we come back let's talk a little bit about dodge city coming up on saturday don't go anywhere it's the mighty 690 Mahomes keeping his feet moving holding it now fires for the end zone late caught touchdown Kansas City, Justin Watson. This Saturday, the Chiefs return to Arrowhead Stadium to take on the Cleveland Browns in their final preseason tune-up. Pre-game starts at 11 a.m. right here on your home for Kansas City Chiefs football. Brought to you on the mighty 690 KGGF by Gillum Liquor, Anderson Plumbing, LLC, The Bad Hell. T.H. Rogers Lumber Company, Skyway Honda, Sports Zone Liquor, Gemini Funding, Great Plains Federal Credit Union, Brewskies, Merle Norman Cosmetics, Millie's Fine Furnishings, Sawyer's Fine Wine and Spirits, and Rack House Billiards. Your home for Red Raven football is U.S. 98 KUSN. He's got a receiver open, end zone, touchdown! Ravens take flight. 
Coffeeville Community College Red Raven Football is brought to you on KUSN by Gillum Liquor, Medical Lodge, Coffeeville Regional Medical Center, Community State Bank, Windsor at Home Care, NDB of Coffeeville, Derailed Commodity, Taco Mayo, and Coffeeville Community College. Intercepted, they read it the whole way. 30, 20, 10, touchdown. The Red Ravens are set to take on Dodge City on Saturday with pregame at 6.30 and kickoff at 7 o'clock right here on US 98. Back here, it's our Red Raven Coaches Show here on the Mighty 690. Happy you're with us, and big thanks to Gigi's Burger Bar here in downtown Coffeeville for being the host for this show every single week, 6 to 6.30. And uh, we'll also thank our other sponsor, the David W. Barnes Funeral Home. Big thanks to all of them for making this show happen. We're joined by Coach Jeff Leiker and defensive line coach Rico Chethers. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, let's move ahead to this Dodge matchup. And the first thing I want to talk about is somebody, a, a group that you, I'm sure you see a lot in practice. Uh, the running game really got going in that second half behind uh, the big play, of course, from Amiri Wiggins. Uh, Azario, Azario Smith, excuse me, is running the ball very well as well. Uh, you end up with 122 rushing yards. Uh, what What's the key to keeping that success going? that really kind of started after the halftime? Well, I think the biggest thing is our O-line just got to continue to know who they block to, to know how to uh, move some people. The back's got to take care of the football. They're talented. We just got to open up a few more holes. It was tough going. They were a little bit of a, a big group to move um, up front. There were some veterans that were awfully good last year. Um, so we've got to do a, a – and this, this week will be the same. They got some – some defensive linemen that are a little bit heavier that are going to be a little tougher to move out of there. But I think if we can uh, if we can get our speed going, you know, it'll be fun to watch the guys. But our old line's got to do a good job of knowing who they're blocking and get after people and stay active with them the whole time and not just block for a, two steps and watch. You know, that's that's never going to get you very far. So, you know, Mary made a couple of big runs for us, and uh, Osario did as well. Um, so we're expecting big things from those guys throughout the year. Coach, I'll ask you, uh, since Dodge City has a lot of sophomores on this team, a lot right. of some returning experience, uh, I, uh, like we've talked about, I thought the defensive line was sharp for the most part, right. especially defending the run against the, the Highland Scotties on Saturday. What's the key to keeping that pressure at the line of scrimmage, winning that battle with the Dodge offensive line and creating pressure in the backfield against both the run and on their quarterback? Well, uh, you know, they have three returning starters on the offensive line and the the ball you know having a mentality you know defense it's all about your swagger and your confidence and your ability in what you do coach Dover our defense coordinator does a phenomenal job I've been around a lot of different coaches uh, throughout my uh, collegiate career and he has one of the sharpest minds that uh, I've ever come across uh, he does a great job putting us in a situation where we need to be what we have to do up front is be physical. We have to set the edge. We've got to play on their side of the ball, and we have to get to the quarterback. You know, Dodge City, they gave uh, Iowa Western a run for their money. Uh, honestly, breaking down the games, going through it, they had a chance to win. They had a wide receiver in the fourth quarter end up uh, hit him right in the hands, and he had the safety beat by five yards. It's a touchdown, and he dropped it. Then there was another play where he ended up catching the ball. He had the defensive back beat by three yards, and he had to dive to catch the ball, which would, if he caught it on the run, it would have been a touchdown. Well, that makes a whole difference in the game uh, as far as that. We just have to play within our scheme and do what we're asked to do up front with the secondary. I mean, it's got to all work in conjunction together. The biggest thing we have to do is we got to be physical up front and we got to take the ball away from them. Uh, forced turnovers, unforced errors, different things like that. And just play smart. You know, I always talk to kids about, hey, play fast, play hard, play smart. Those three things. Uh, we don't want them out there thinking. We want them out there reacting and playing. Fast, physical, and aggressive. That is the key for the Red Ravens against Dodge City this weekend. Coach Chethers, Coach Liker, thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck this weekend. This has been the Red Raven Coaches Show on the Mighty 690 and on the Red Raven Sports Network. We'll talk to you next week.